Engels, who was a collaborator of, of Marx, in 18, 1872 published a short pamphlet on the housing question and in which he said that the capital, capitalism can never solve the housing question. It can only ever move it around. they build up these cities and these towns and then they just abandon them right and the factories move the workplaces move the houses become run down the people are basically left behind right so that's why we see movements like you know of the of, of rich people into cities and then into the suburbs and then into the cities and then into the suburbs because housing and homelessness is a fundamental feature of capitalism Capitalists want you to not have to see it, right? They want you to know that it exists because they want you to know that you're basically just one paycheck away from being homeless, as I would guess 90% of us in this room are, right? Uh, and so that's really what Prop 291 was about. And that's why we're gonna be focusing on distribution, not only downtown, also other areas, but primarily downtown because we believe that everybody has a right to Indianapolis, not just the banks, not just the ultra-rich, uh, not just the landlords, not just the corporations. So we started Hope Packages, uh, and we conceive of it not as a charity, but really as an operation of solidarity and building solidarity amongst workers and oppressed people in Indianapolis and the surrounding area. Um, so my name is Sam James, uh, pronouns they, them. I am on the steering committee of the Indianapolis branch of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Um, we're here tonight um, assembling Hope Packages, um, which is our outreach program for uh, unhoused residents in Indianapolis. So this is an outgrowth of our struggle against Prop 291, um, introduced by, I believe it's Councilman Michael Hart, but honestly, his name just doesn't stay in my head because he's such a slug of a human. Um, anyway, he introduced this proposition last November, um, which was designed to prevent people from doing outreach, basically, with homeless people downtown. Um, it was really at the behest of city market vendors um, who have been complaining for months at that point about, oh, all the homeless people at city market, and they're so dirty and dangerous. Um, so we opposed that proposition uh, because we believe everyone has a right to Indianapolis, not just businesses and landlords and banks. Um, and we believe that our unhoused neighbors need solidarity, right? They're among the most vulnerable people in our city and around the country, uh, especially with the pandemic right now. Um, they're at increased risk and more and more people are struggling with housing. Um, all of us are really just a paycheck away from being homeless ourselves. So Hope Packages grew out of that struggle because we don't just want to stand politically with our unhoused neighbors, we want to stand with them materially as well. Um, we all know that landlords have been champing at the bit uh, for months to evict their tenants um, with the moratoriums on evictions, on rents. Um, a lot of people have been unable to make housing payments due to being laid off during the pandemic. So. Yes, I think we can expect, if not a wave of evictions, definitely a wave of attempted evictions. People are going to be fighting their landlords for, for a long time after this. This is definitely planned to be an ongoing program um, because the housing struggle is ongoing. Until we uh, overthrow capitalism, it will continue to be a struggle. So we will continue to stand with our unhoused neighbors. What we're going to put in each kit, we have these awesome drawstring backpacks that someone donated off our Amazon wish list. Um, we're putting together 30 of them tonight. So each one's going to have a toothbrush and toothpaste. It's going to have a little sandwich baggie of a small shampoo, conditioner, lotion, and soap. We're going to have a pack of tissues, a pack of band-aids, either a hand sanitizer or like a package of sanitizing wipes. We have like a variety of donations, so we're just going to kind of um, we're also going to put in a sandwich baggie of a few pads and tampons in each one, as well as a pair of socks, 
um, a couple sets of hand and or foot warmers, and then a gallon sized baggie of four granola bars, uh, six miscellaneous snacks, which are all in this clear tote right here. And then we're gonna throw in two water bottles in each bag. My name's Madison Cockerham. I'm actually Derek Ford's student. He's the one, well, pro, former student. Um, I graduated as his student back in May, and he kind of told me about this. The first time I actually met with the group was um, when we were protesting Prop 291. And I kind of got the Facebook invite today. I invited several of my friends who were really interested and wanted to join um, for the same reasons we've all talked about today. The state's not doing what they need to do. Somebody needs to you know, step up and help provide, so figured all of us were excited to come and spare time and help and are looking forward to continuing doing so in the future. So if folks are interested in getting involved in bringing donations, assembling kits, um, they can follow Party for Socialism and Liberation Indianapolis on Facebook or on Twitter at PSL Indy. You can also send an email to IndieHopePackages at gmail.com and we'll reach out. Um, Right now, we are hosting donation drop-off hours from noon to 2 on Sundays here at the AMP building at 55 South State Street. Um, but as of the 23rd, we will be switching that to Saturdays. So if you follow us on social media, those updates will be posted. We have a um, PayPal and a Venmo. Um, we recently hit our GoFundMe goal that covers rent in this building for a whole year. So thanks, everyone. Um, but PayPal is Indie Hope Packages and uh, Venmo is at Hope Packages. So you can send monetary donations there that will go to shelves for our office, supplies for the kits, et cetera.